Yeah, yeah. What's up? What's good? It's BQ. It's the Impact Lounge. It is the place to be. It's the number one place to be, as a matter of fact, for the Impact Wrestling fan. Thanks for checking me out today. If it's your first time here and you enjoy the content, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Give this video a thumbs up. Why not? Why not? Even if you don't like it, why don't you why don't you give me a thumbs up? Don't give me a thumbs down. You probably give me a thumbs down, right? How about a thumbs up? Uh, this is a mailbag episode for you guys. One time for your mind. Haven't done this in a little while. Uh, I'm pretty sure last time I did it uh, was with TQ, who's a TQ. I'm sorry, I was listening to a, a song on the radio, or not on the radio, but uh, my YouTube music from R&B singer TQ. That dates me a little bit because he was out in the 90s. Uh, I meant to say TW. He was with me last time. He's still on a um, little bit of a hiatus. And uh, he'll be back up in the place to be soon enough. We'll be knocking out some cool factor episodes. You know what it is. So let's get into this. Um, I'm just doing a handful of questions here. Wanted to give you guys some relatively quick content in relation to everything else I do here on the channel. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first question here. And you probably see it uh, in the the title of this upload. Should they retire the knockouts tag titles since they can't sustain a division? Now, I don't want to see them retire the titles because I was one of the biggest proponents of them having the titles and bringing them back to begin with. And I have been for years. I've been talking about the knockouts tag team titles being a, th being a, being a thing, them bringing them back for quite some time. Here's the problem. They don't have an established vision for it, uh, an, estab an established division. So if you guys remember, when the, when they first started laying the groundwork for the tag titles to return, every knockout on the roster was paired up with somebody. They weren't necessarily a tag team, but they were coming down to the ring together. They were involved together. They were doing tag team wrestling. They're just, everyone seemed to find someone you know you had kylie ray and Susie. uh you had um kira hogan and tasha steels obviously there was different combinations of knockouts that they put together and you could tell they were laying the groundwork for putting for bringing the division back and then i don't quite remember it might have had to do with the pandemic a little bit i don't remember but i, I know there was just some curveballs that they got hit with i know kylie ray left um, there was just, there was just different things that happened and the division kind of fell apart and then they, they brought it back and we had, the, we eventually had the knockouts tag team title tournament. We had some rando ass teams in there, uh, that we'd never seen on impact television. And it was, you know, the concept finally was brought to brought to life, but the ultimate execution of it was not very good. Now, with that being said, all the ladies who have held the belts all the teams you know who, who've been champion they've been you know legitimate pairings for the most part it was nothing uh you know i don't obviously don't watch a whole lot of wwe this, these days but i know that from seeing people complain online is that they throw a lot of women together to challenge for the titles and impact is getting into that that ballpark don't get me wrong but the, for the most part, the, the inspiration, the influence, um, decay, you know, these are all fire and flavor. These are all, you know, established teams in name, at least, you know, they're not, they're not just random pairings. Uh, the problem was from the very beginning when they did this, they never reestablished the division. Like they were, they were laying the groundwork, pairing the girls up and then that fell apart. And we've never reached that again. You know, um, you know, Vex was another team, obviously, but we've never reached that again, where they're kind of like, hey, these two girls are gonna start hanging together. These two are gonna start hanging together. They just don't do that. Now it's like they're gonna find that one team on the roster and make them the champs. And then the challengers are gonna be a little thrown together. You know what I mean? So th there's not a clear vision for it, at least from our perspective as a viewer. And um, one thing I talk a lot about in my impact reviews is that when there is a team and there is someone that can pop up the challenge for the belts, you know, they'll lay, they'll lay the challenge and they'll wrestle for the belts next week. And I'm not saying that we need these long creative builds, long-term storytelling. Like th these are not, 
you know, these titles are not at the forefront of impact. These aren't, uh, you know, the big dog titles. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to make that clear. That's not what I'm saying, but you got give it, give it some kind of room to breathe. And, you know, even the match, even though the match was awful, when they took on Killer Kelly, um, I'm talking about Decay, not Decay, but uh, I said Decay a couple times, but it, I, was, I meant to say the uh, the Death Dolls. Uh, it was the, no, I'm sorry, De- Decay did have the belts at one point. They got me all confused with these gimmicks. When Killer Kelly and Taylor Wilde took on the Death Dolls, it was like they laid the challenge, and then they wrestled the next week. And then two weeks later is the Impact Plus show, and they defend the belts again. And that's another thing I'm always saying. Every title doesn't have to be on every single monthly special. You know, you, you let stuff breathe a little bit. And the problem is they defend the belts so often. And by often, I don't mean every week. But they, they defend them relatively often to where, you know, they'll beat a, a team, and then it's just like, well, who the hell is going to challenge for them next? And then I've been saying forever, you got to bring the hex because that's the only good program you can do at this point for the belts. It's really the most established tag team is the best tag team out there. You know, there's there's very few like women tag teams, you know, renegade twins and, and things of these nature. Like there's teams out there, but the hex was the biggest, the best program they could do. They brought them on. They challenged for the title two weeks later and they lost. And I, I, you know, obviously I don't know creatively what is in store for the Death Dolls next. But I mean, there's not a long list of knockouts tag teams beating the door down. Like if the Hex beat them, at least you can you can uh, kill a couple months leading up to a rematch. You know what I mean? So uh, I just think they have to do a better job with it. I think there has, has to be a clearer vision. I don't want them to get rid of the division because then we have a bunch of girls fighting for nothing again. And, uh, you know, I, I said the same thing before they brought the digital media championship, even though it means nothing. There's too many people on the roster fighting for nothing. Uh, you know, so I don't want them to get rid of it by any stretch. But, you know, the, the knockouts tag division is probably the easiest one to build up because there's no shortage of women who want to come work for Impact. The guys, that's a little bit different. That's a little touchier. But Impact has provided such a great home for women's wrestling. It still really means something to be a knockout. And, uh, you know, to do per appearance dates rather than sign, you know, 50-year-old guys to, you know, two-year deals. I mean, I think there's just a better way. Obviously, I'm not in the business side of things. I'm just speaking from a fan outside looking in. I think there's a better way to utilize your fund sometimes. And and, and you can bring girls on, you know, and, and form some teams, you know, you communicate with them. Hey, you're on a per appearance deal. You're not going to be a big part of the company going forward. We'll see what happens, but we need to establish this division. You know, even, even if there's some jobber teams in there, um, but a minimum start pairing these girls up again. Like Alicia should be walking around with somebody backstage. Killer Kelly should be, you, you know what I mean? Uh, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, even though Tasha Steeles uh, was paired up with, uh, Savannah Evans, it, it just it just seemed like Savannah Evans was her bodyguard. They never felt like an actual tag team, you know. So uh, I would not like them to retire the belts. Uh, let's get into this next one here real quick. Uh, who's in front of me? Who do I think will dethrone Josh Alexander? I think it will be, and I think it should be Steve Macklin. That's been the best long term story. Now I've been, you know, I've been saying it stopped getting cute when all these guys started getting title shots and Macklin was on the outside looking in. I understand that was the story, but it also doesn't make sense when people are just coming up off the streets. Like I could walk into the impact zone tomorrow and, and probably get a title shot. Uh, I think it became a little too much. I think they got a little too cute with it. I think the long-term story would have been more effective if uh, Steve Macklin won the number one contenders match and then started this, you know, I've been waiting my time. I've been waiting for my turn. People are coming off the streets wrestling for the title. Rather than him complaining about it over the last several months, I just think uh, the story would have been better if he was the number one contender and then he started getting into the backstory and giving the why he needs to win this title and why this is his time. And 
bringing us back through everything that had happened. And I think we would sit here and be like, oh, damn, he's right. You know, like he's just been sitting on the outside looking in instead of, instead of getting a title shot like everybody else is. And it's kind of the same I was saying with the Death Dolls holding the title. Like Josh has been a champion for a long time. He's wrestled everybody. I think he's defended it too much. Uh, but I understand what they're trying to do with him. You know, they they the term fighting champion gets thrown around really, really loosely in wrestling, but he like really is, you know. And they're trying to give him a catalog to to finally put him, you know, when people start talking about TNA and they're saying AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, and it's the same four or five names they're always saying, right? Like it's they 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 haven't added anyone from the last decade into that group. So they want Josh to be one of those names synonymous with those guys. I get it, but now we're getting to a point he probably needs to drop the title because then it's it's going to get really bland i think if he beats macklin at rebellion i think the story i think it's just going to get absolutely bland like i used to see that with john cena where he would hold the title forever and then it, it felt like okay it's his time to drop it and then he would win again and it's just like oh my god so we're now we're back to square one who's the challenger going to be and we're just sitting through this forever. I thought the same thing watching the NWA pay-per-view the other day and Camille uh, beat Angelina Love. And I was like, as a wrestling fan, kind of legitimately pissed because I was like, how long is she going to hold this belt? You know, like they've run out of good challengers over there for her when they had Allison K there and they had a few other girls with names, Melina, there were some names there. You know what I mean? And Angelina Love was like the last big name on there. You know, I think Taryn Terrell challenged her at one point. Now it's like, well, who the fuck's going to wrestle her now? You know, um, so I think it should be Steve Macklin. I think he has the opportunity to, to be like the modern day. I say modern day like it happened 30 years ago, but like the kind of what EC3 was, you know, a decade ago uh, coming in, uh, had a little bit of a WWE run, but you don't really, you know, uh, connect him with that time in his life. So he's more of a homegrown star, and they really, really build something with him. Right now, he should be steamrolling opponents, and he's not. That's kind of my problem with how they utilize Steve Macklin. At least he's winning. Um, you know, And they started the story with him losing to Bully Ray. I get that. Um, but I think it could have been done a little bit better. You know, But he he's the guy. He should absolutely be the guy. Um, another one here, if Bully Ray... Tommy Dreamer isn't a loser leave towns match was bully Ray bully Ray's return a waste of our time. I don't think it was, it was a waste of the time by any stretch seeing him on our televisions. Like, did I want him to win, uh, you know, the, the gauntlet for gold? Um, no, you know, did I want him to, to main event hard to kill whatever? No, but everything he's been involved with so far has been really, really good. So there's a place for him in the company. But what I when I was saying on my impact review last week, he just shouldn't be wrestling Tommy Dreamer. I understand the story. I get it. But if you look at AEW has Jeff Jarrett and Sting and they have these old guys, but they're not wrestling each other. They're they're involved with the younger talent and they blend in nicely because of it. You don't even think their age when you see them on a the screen. Like you don't know that Sting is 60 whatever and Darby Allen's in his early 20s. Like you don't you don't get that. They just seem like a team when they come out, you know? But Impact's way just has a way of delivering it where it's like what are these old guys doing in the ring, you know? And it's oftentimes because they wrestle each other, you know? Um so that's what I'm just I think they're doing a good job him and Dreamer. I'm just I've just you guys know me. I've been past the point of wanting to see dreamer on my tv on a regular basis um i i do like what bully ray's doing i don't think a loser leaves town is is necessarily appropriate for it i don't know where they're going with it other than they're probably going to have some kind of old school rules match which you guys heard, heard me say this before what's your target demographic with that what age wrestling fan are you targeting with that match you know so i think that's just my biggest issue is there's a play. There's even a place for Tommy Dreamer in the company, but they're just wrestling each other. Uh, you know, that's not um, something I have a lot of interest in. I don't think the majority of the Impact fans have interest in it. But I'm right now. I'm trusting what they're doing with Bully Ray because when he brought they brought him on, they clearly had a a long term vision for him. 
you know, it wasn't just like with our, Rob, like Rob Van Dam, like, hey, let's sign him just to sign because he's a name. And, he, you know, it's not like that. Like, I'm pretty sure they sat down with him and said, here's here's what we got planned out for you. You know, so I, I'm trusting whatever they got going with Bully Ray right now. And, and you know, his story with Tommy Dreamer, to be honest with you. Um, and then the last one, are there any cities you'd like to see them try to run outside of the normal loop? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so when you're when you're deciding on a city, there's one thing you want to know for sure when you're doing your market research is, is will people from the show will the people from the city attend the show are there going to be butts and seats we saw with some of the twitch stuff impact early impact plus stuff they're doing really really random cities nobody there and then they had some cities where it was hot you know they did ohio shows those did really really well san antonio that did really well uh, they did somewhere up in michigan that did really really well Recently, Kentucky, which I think they might have done a TV loop there last year in Kentucky, if I'm if, but there were some cities they did, namely Ohio, Michigan. Uh, Michigan's a state, obviously. I don't know where they were in Michigan. Um, and Ohio is also a state. Um, so I don't know where they were there. I should say those two states, Michigan, Ohio, and then the city of San Antonio, had really, really awesome crowds. That's areas I would attack again. And one thing I've been critical of in the past is that uh, like, I'm not critical of everything they do, but Ohio, like you've got at one point you had like six people on the roster from Ohio. You know, I don't understand why they have not gone to Massachusetts, to Boston, or, you know, maybe not Boston, but one of those local, you know, smaller cities where Eddie Edwards and Alicia work and they do their indie dates. Obviously Eddie's a much bigger star than her, but uh, I wouldn't do it now because he's a heel, but why not visit some of the hometowns of your top talent? And that would that would uh, improve the aesthetic on TV. It would improve how things sound, like with people really behind them. Um, you know, if they were to do it, in, you know, somewhere around Eddie Edwards' hometown when he was a baby face and you just hear the people going crazy for him. Like, I think that's just very beneficial to the product, uh, you know, I just the cities they go to, I don't see a connection between those cities and anyone on the roster. That's that's kind of part of the problem. But you also want to visit cities where no one else is really attacking because that's how you get um, start building a fan base up. You know, that's why this Las Vegas thing. Remember, they used to do Sam's Town. They never it was a nightmare, those shows, but they've been consistent with it and they're building something there. You know, AEW is not going to Las Vegas. WWE is not going to Las Vegas. You know, so you do want to attack some of these cities where no one's coming to. Um, you know, the, like they did New Orleans, and you know, they're definitely getting out of their comfort zone. And at first, the returns were not great. There was two hundred people there. You know, you heard freaking Carl Anderson uh, make a mockery of it. Now we're getting like in two thousand twenty three, they seem to be getting sellouts wherever they go. Like you can hear the people; they look like they're having fun. They sound like they're having fun. So. Whatever they're doing from a promotional marketing standpoint seems to be working. Uh, giving away matches on social media before we see them build on TV, I don't think is smart, but um, maybe that's something that's working. I don't know. But those are the areas. If, if I really had to pick in the United States, and then even to be a little biased, because I live out here, St. Louis. Really hot, um, really hot bed for independent wrestling in St. Louis. Uh, we had NWA come here a couple times, and they, you know, pack the place. So, um, but they're, they're, you know, they're finding their spots, the, the Georgias and or Atlanta, you know, and uh, now they're going to finally do Chicago. I think they should have Chicago be part of the loop. I wouldn't make it a crutch like AEW does, but you know, it, sh it should be part of the loop. But, the, um, but yeah, San Antonio is like, that's the real wild card one. I remember they did the one, that's the one rich Swan got hurt at. Um, and I said, man, yo, they, they need to go, go back there. Uh, you know, so I'm trusting that they're trying some new things, but there are some def de definitely some cities to attack, uh, you know, but you definitely want to get some of those cities where other companies are not routinely coming to, you know, I think that's the smartest thing to do. So thanks for checking me out with this mailbag episode. I'll be doing them a little more often, kind of like, you know, 20 minute uh, ballpark, three, four questions. So that'll do it for me. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.